Welcome to One Hash CRM. In this video, we will cover how we can easily navigate through One Hash CRM. What all terminologies are useful in One Hash CRM? We will discuss about the basic terminologies of One Hash CRM. We will walk through various views, various layouts, how quickly we can do the entries, and what are the significance of the fields and different field types. Whenever we do a sign up with one hash CRM, we select the site name like one hash CRM dot one hash dot EI. This becomes our login URL, which you will use at the later stage for login. The same site name that we have entered at the time of sign up, you will get these details over the email as well. After the successful registration on the login page, you enter your credentials and you are ready to start. If you have a system manager role, then you will lend to the app page. We also say at the desk page. On this page, we have shortcuts created for a particular modules. We have this home screen. It can be customized according to our needs. We can add here new charts. We can add here new shortcuts. These shortcuts can be for any report or it can be for any doc type. Doc type is basically our sub modules within that particular modules. Let's say if you're talking about the CRM, then lead is a sub modules inside that CRM modules. Every sub modules being called as doc type. These terminology is being referred from the physical moment of the documents. Like whenever we are doing a transaction, then we pass a piece of paper or a piece of document from one desk to another desk. Relating to that, we have created this doc type so you can see this doc type. We have various doc types. Let's say a lead. Lead is being called doc type. It may be customer. Any entity or the subgroup inside any modules is being referred as this doc type. We can add as many shortcuts as we want. We can have some quick filters also applied. Whenever we are creating these shortcuts, then we get these numbers like 20 open. These are based on the filters that are being set. So we can create these shortcuts. We can add charts according to our needs. Home is our customized homepage where we have all the quick links that makes navigation easy for us. Every user can set their own layout according to their need. In every modules, the key report comes in form of the standard workspaces. All these workspaces are available under workspace list for every modules. In case someone has created their custom so, they have access to their custom page. Else they get the standard page. All these pages are available here. We can navigate through any of the modules with the help of these links. These modules are visible according to the access that we have given to the user. If you go to the user list, open any user, then what all modules you should have access to can be controlled from allow modules. If you uncheck any of the modules, then the user will not have access to the particular modules. These are the core modules which are available and accessible to everyone by default. And if you see home accounting, assets, build. This is particularly for the basic setup, or we can see for a developer what all things are required for customization. Buying CRM, HR, loan management, payroll, projects, quality, selling, stock, support, website settings, utilities. All the settings related to every modules can be directly accessed from here. All the modules or the specific domain that we have enabled will be visible here. These domains can be managed from domain setting where we can set what all the domains should be active on our site. Based on the domain, there will be domain specific doc types. We can access those after enabling that particular domain. For education, we have all the doc types created. Similarly for healthcare, we have a dedicated setup for manufacturing. We have a dedicated domain specific customization developed for nonprofit on go. We have the complete thing available. For retail, we have complete point of sale loyalty program developed. When it comes to product administration, then from customization, we have access to things which are necessary for the basic customization, 
we require the form layout customization. We need to add some custom fields. Then for a particular doc type, we have this customization. We can create our own dashboard. We can add our custom charts. We can add our charts based on some different reports. So, that is being referred as chart source. This is for the messages that we want a custom translation to be added. We can add those as the system supports multi-language. Other than the standard roles that comes predefined into the system, we can add our custom roles as well. And for those custom created roles, we can define the permission rules. What all the permissions are being required. From integration, we can manage all our integration. We can do our database backup or our regular files backup directly onto the Dropbox or S3 backup or Google Drive. This can be directly integrated. For all Google services, we can use this Google Settings, Google Contacts, Calendar, or Drive can be synced to the OneHash CRM. If you want authentication to be done from OneHash account, we can use an Oath client, and based on the Oath clients that we have configured, we can provide the login access with the help of login credentials. With the help of the social login, we can enable login via Facebook, Google, or LinkedIn. For marketplace integrations, we have direct integration with the WooCommerce. One WooCommerce site can be integrated here. Similarly, we can have Amazon and WS settings. We can access these settings and request for the developer access from our paid marketplace account. With the help of Shopify setting, we can add our Shopify. One Shopify site can be added. With the help of the payment integration, we can request the payment via these portals. Under the additional integration, we can have direct integration with Exodal, Fertilefni, and played supported banks. We can have direct integration under the played settings. With the help of SMS settings, we can set our SMS service provider API here. We can add all the required parameters and system will start sending the SMS. In case of Twilio, we can enable the Twilio settings. In case we want to integrate it with the webhook, we can integrate it with the Slack as well. Webhook can be used for pushing the triggers to any other external source on any particular activity. This can be very useful for seamless integration with OneHash. With the help of the webhook, OneHash can send triggers to external world application which support REST API. We have the tools like to do, note, file, assignment rule and a repeat. To do help us in tracking all the pending tasks that needs to be done by any individual. Whenever we assign any record to someone a to-do gets created, we can specify the required details and user can track what all tasks he needs to do on a single page. With the help of assignment rules, we can auto-assign the record, the lead, customer to an individual based on the priority or the conditions that we have assigned. Remember, all these conditions use simple Python expression. This helps in automatic assigning. This can be done based on to the round robin, load balancing, or based on a particular field. Notes help us in creating our internal note, or in case we want to do some announcement throughout the system, we can do it after making it public. It can be used for the announcement within the system. File Manager has all the files which are being uploaded to the system, so complete file directory can be checked here. We can arrange it into grid view as well. We have different views like report, dashboard, Kanban, etc. Auto repeat helps us in creating the documents automatically after a certain period. It can be enabled from auto repeat. Similarly, we have these email utilities or the automation milestone settings. These all things can be accessed from users. We can administer all the users related activities. We can assign role to them, set the user permissions. Everything from user creation to assigning them the required roles updating their personal information, changing their password, set document notifications they want to enable, their email signature. It supports the HTML as well. We can specify the signature in HTML, what all email accounts they have access to. 
All modules they have access to. All the user-related activities can be managed. In case you want to send the reset password link so this can be directly shared from here. What all documents they have access to. Setting access for a particular field. Permitted documents these can be managed from here. All roles management, their permission management, user profiles creation, these all can be managed. Then we can assign tags to the records. It will be helpful when we're going to sort the records based on some tag. Like in an email box if we see, we have tags or labels in mailbox. Based onto the tags that are being assigned, we can filter out those records. In case we want to clear the filters, we can just clear the filters to, to see all their records. These filters like name open or on the status, these are the standard filters. The standard filters can be managed from customized form to filter any of the record. We can specify the field and select among the various conditions that can be applied. Equals means value is exactly equal. Not equals value is not equal to that. Like if this string contains between a particular value. Not like that string doesn't contain that value. And we can pass multiple values. Note in, we can pass the comma separated multiple values. Is whether this value is present or not. Greater than, if value is greater than that particular value. Less than, less than or equal to if value is greater than or equals to that particular value. Similarly, we can select the condition based on field type we select these condition changes. Let's suppose we select state, so it is again a text type. We are getting these conditions like equal not equal, but if we change it to let's say lead owner, then we get this auto selected based on the field type the most appropriate condition would get auto-selected. We can select any of these values and can apply the filters. If we select the status, then it's a static drop-down or a pick list type field. Select type field, you can select from the predefined values and apply the filter. We can add multiple filters by clicking on the field. Remember this name field refers to the unique ID. It's not the lead name or the person's name. It's the unique ID for any particular record. It is fixed standard filter in every form, every list view. It refers to the name field that is visible here. We can apply all the filters that we want according to the field type that we have specified. We get all these options in case of numeric field. We have comparison with number less than equal to. The system does these comparisons according to the need. Like territory, we have a tree type of field where we can get it based on the equal. If we select equal, then it will select the exact comparison where that particular node is being selected. In case of equals not equals, descendants of all the territories which are part of that particular group node will be visible. I hope filtering is clear by now. In case you want to clear the filters, we can clear the filters. Sometimes it happens that we do not change the standard filters and we try clearing filters and we get to a situation where we are not able to see our desired record. Standard filters don't get cleared when we clear the filter from here. We need to manually change the standard filters. Similarly, we can save the filters that we use frequently. Let's see for example. I want to see the leads which are being created yesterday for that we have this comparison like time span where we can select last week last month, last quarter, yesterday, today, tomorrow. Based on the condition that you want to have on a particular date or reference date, you can select that so, it will be created. We can save these filters as well. If you want to specify this global, then this filter will be available to all the users throughout the system and once we enter it gets saved. Now, we can directly click that filter to see all the data filtered based on that condition. If you want to delete that filter, you can just click on cross mark here. I hope now we have better understanding on the lead. Whenever we select, it selects all the visible records. We can change it to 100 or 500, and then we can use this load more button since the records are less than 500. Here the number of total records available are less than 500. We can't check it here. If we change it again to 100, 
Then, and every click 100 records will be loaded. Now if you click load more, then more 100 records will be loaded, and we will be seeing 200 records on the top. We can use this checkbox. Once we select this checkbox, the bulk actions get enabled. We can do editing. We can select the field for which we want to change value for that particular field. This will update this value on all the records that we have selected. The complete list gets modified. You can perform the bulk action that is being required. In case you get some error while performing the action, you will see the error messages. In case you want to do the bulk assignment, you can do that. If you want to apply assignment rule, you can apply that. You want to add tag, you can do. If you want to print in bulk, you can do that. In case you want to delete, you can delete as well. We might come across some errors. Before deleting any record, we need to first remove the dependent links on that particular record. We do not recommend using this bulk update for more than 100 records at a time. It may make the page unresponsive. If you exit, then the action will get terminated. In every document we have this add button. It is visible to only the users which have access to create the record. We can do the filtering. Based on these various fields, which comes by default, you can do the sorting either ascending or descending, and we can select the field for sorting from here. In the report view like in list view, we have limitations that we can't show more than 11 fields on list view, but when it comes to for the lead on report view, we can have as many fields as we want to show. We can directly pick the columns of all the fields required. We just select it and submit. All the data will be visible in front of us. If you want to do the comparison, you can do it directly from here. We can use these fields for filtering out. Remember, this filtering works only on the fields or the data records which are loaded on the page. In case, you want to filter from all the data that is available, then use the filters from here. Similar to the extent fields available under the list view. We have standard filters available on the report view as well. To access pre-built report, you can click onto the select report. You can see the list of all the reports which are being created for this particular doc type. If you will click on any particular report, then that report will be visible to you. Based on these reports, you can do all the required filtering like greater than five. In case you want to see this particular data into the chart format, you can click on set chart. You can select which field you want to show on X axis and what field data you want to show on Y axis. You can select the color of the bar as well. If you click preview, you will see that chart. You can choose among various chart options available to that particular report. In case you want to add the chart to a dashboard, you can give a start name, select the dashboard and save. You can verify that a chart has been added to that dashboard. This way we can quickly filter out the records. We can access the data and based on that we can create these cards. We can create various fields. In case we want to create some card, we can create that also. If we want to see it in terms of some average that aggregation can be checked, on which dashboard we want to add, what will be the chart label we can add it. If we view this dashboard, then we can check that the lead by territory card has been added. Sometimes, we want to see the total of all the rows which are available. Wherever possible, we get the option of total. Let's move back to the standard report view. All the filtering options that were available onto the list view are also available on report. We can save these filters for our need. Again, if you want to add any particular field after any particular location, we can add that. We can insert it before or after that. We can select and accordingly filters can be added. Sometimes we require quick numbers, like how we can follow up with our prospect. Let's say we select the lead owner and all the leads related to that owner where status is lead will appear if we want to see the pipeline with him. I can quickly add group and can get the leads based onto the status. We can see that there are 16 leads for which quotation has been sent and we get this complete count in a single page. 
If you want to see the chart, we can click onto the menu. We can show total, in case you want to show the total. If you want to set the chart for this, we can select what field we want to have onto the status and count, what chart we want to see. Once we can submit it, we see this complete chart. We can do the required modification. Let's say I change it to bar graph. I can see all the bars. It can be very helpful while we are doing analysis for the particular data. Clearly, we can apply the filters. We can select the parameter. We can fix the parameter when we can apply the filters on the rest of the parameter to get a quick number at a glance. We can get other aggregations like sum, average, sales order report. If you want to see the total revenue generated by that particular salesperson, it can be helpful. In case we don't see changes reflected, we can either do the reload or what we can do is we can clear the cache. In case we don't see, we can use the Control Shift R or Command Shift R for reloading the page, or we can use this reload menu. I hope the report part is also clear. In case you want to export the report, we can export it from here. We can export into either Excel or CSV. If you want to export all the records, you can check this. Toggle sidebar. It will toggle the sidebar. If we want to print, we can select the records. We can do the selection, and then we can do the print. In case you want to see total, we can click on show total, row will be added. In case we want to set up it for auto emailing, then first we need to save the report, and then we can proceed for it. We can save the report. We can give it a new name. We can add this custom report. Once we see, we can access this report. This report name will be now be visible on this list as well. In case it's not visible, we can use the Control Shift R if we want to move back to the report builder from here. After report view, let's move to the dashboard view. On the dashboard view, we can customize this dashboard as per our need. We can click on the customize dashboard. It is completely customizable. We can remove it. We can hide this. We can enable. We can show it. We can expand it. It will cover the full area. We want to delete it. We want to drag it after some chart. A layout changing can be done. We have these filtering options available. We can apply the filters. We can add the data filtering on the charts as well. Once we're done with the customization or we want to add new charts, the complete part we can have and we can save this customization. With the help of the dashboard view, we can enable the dashboards for every module or the submodule as well. We will discuss more about number. These all cards come with the option of filtering out. If you right click, it takes us to the data that is available on that particular point. If you click and if it is based on the date time, then if we have charts which are based on the drop down or the drill down, so what we can have. Let's say we are seeing the data of last year and we are seeing the yearly view. Now let's say we want to switch to the monthly view or the half year. If we click on monthly view, it will shift us to the weekly view. Similarly, if you click further, then it will take us to the daily view so the drill down can be used with a single click. If we use the control and the right click, then it takes us back to the upper view on right click. We can move back so the drill down feature works only when we have the day range available where we have these years available. And then we are seeing these views as yearly. Now we want to zoom in or zoom out within the quarterly view, or we want to zoom to the monthly view. Instead of selecting it from the field, we can just use the click and it will feature to the lower. Whenever we are on bar, we just right click, it will take us to that filter data. Now coming to the next view is Kanban view. We can create as many cards as we want. Either we can select it from the already created one or we can create our own new Kanban board. Kanban board can be created based on the select field that is there. We can select it from any of the select field that is available in that doc type. 
We can give the name of that Kanban board and we can save. We see the data based on that like we see the lead. This is based on the status. On this view, we can directly add the reports. We can make it important. In case you comment, we can add that comment so it will open that particular record. We can add the comment. If you come back, we want to assign it, we can use this plus icon. It will open the assignment dialog. We can assign it to someone. The complete part can be done. In case it is moving from one value to another value, we can drag and drop it to another option. It will automatically update the status. If you want to add another record, we can directly create the new records. For every list, we can select any of these bullets that has been required. It can be added again as we add the filtering option. Like other views, we have the filtering option on this view as well. All the sorting can be done. We can again switch among the other layer. Then we have image view. On image view, we can see all the data in form of images. We can see all the images which are available. We can do the filtering. Standard filters are available. We can filter based on the fields that we have already set. In case we have predefined filters, we can see all those filters and filter the data based on that. After that, we have the calendar view on various documents like we have events. Here we have the calendar view as well. On calendar also, we have all the standard options available. We can select any of the calendar that is being required. We can select if any other calendar view is available for the doc type. For every document, we can create a custom calendar. On any document, if you want to create a calendar view, we can create that on calendar view. Based on the person, we can select the calendar. A user can create their own calendar and can have their filters applied, and they can see their complete list. We can switch between the views and we can go back to other views. In the project, we have Gantt view as well. We can change this bar. We can change that color so the relevant document. If you come back, then that color gets changed. We have the tree view where we can see all the nodes. We can add child inside that. We can add the group, subgroup, and inside that also we can add the child. We can create element as many nested structures as we want. We select the node on that option, we can get it the option of adding the child. In case we want to make that a group node, we can check this. We can specify the subject. We can create that. The task will be created. In case you want to change any task and you want to make that a group, we can change it in the detailed view. If you want to change it to the group, we come with check the group and save it. It gets converted into a group node. If you click then on group node, we get an option of adding child. This way we can manage the trees. I hope all the views are clear. Whenever we open any particular record, then we get this detailed view, or we say it a form view. On form view after saving any record, we get the sidebar where we have option of changing the image. If you have images filled in that particular field, we can assign this record to the user. Once you assign, it creates a to-do. It creates a centralized list. In case of attachment, we can attach as many attachments as we want. We can add the external link of files which are not available onto the system. In case you want to click the image, we can enable the camera access. You can share it among the team. Whenever we share it, then the user to we are sharing gets the read access by default. In case we wanted to give them an edit access, we can give them write permission. We can check the likes. We can add it so the number of likes gets counted. How many comments we have? You see all the comments which are there into the comments section. Here we get all the communication or all the comments. What are comments that we specify gets added into the timeline view. In case you want to tag someone from the team, we can tag it and we can specify a note. 
When we do this, we get a notification as well. If we talk about the form view, then based on to the field type that we are having, we get these options whenever we are having any link field. If you click on this value, then we get this arrow. It helps us in navigating directly to that particular record. If you click this arrow, it will take us to the field where it is being linked. For select drop down, we can directly select the values. For calendar, we get the calendar pop up. And note it is in a well formatted manner. We can do the complete formatting. We can do the bold, italic, or bullet format content. Then we have some child tables also. From this view, we can navigate to the next record for which we have added filters. We can directly navigate to the next record without navigating back to the list and then coming back. Let's say, for example, I apply the filter open. If I open this record, the next code will be automatically open based on the filtering that we have done. In every document, we have this print option. If you click on this print icon, we see the print format for that particular record. All the fields which have value gets auto printed, or the fields that you have selected gets printed. You can change the language. Multi language is supported for all the translations which are there. It gets automatically translated in that particular language. In case of the letterhead, we can select the desired letterhead or no letterhead. These are the common options available. If you want to download in print PDF format, you can click on PDF. It will open the PDF. If you want to see it into the full page, we can do that with the help of the print settings. We can change specification for the print. If we want to move back to that record, we can click on the link back to that particular record. Then on some modules, we have the child document associated on that particular doc type. Like if we go to the opportunity, then we have a child table for items. For child table type of fields, we have an option of edit. We can add multiple rows by clicking on add row. If you click on edit, then it opens a detailed view where we have the option of delete. If you click on delete, this row gets deleted or we can delete the row by selecting and deleting it. When you click on edit, you see a lot more detail about it in case you click. If you want to do the continuous insertion of the records, we can use insert below. Now, I can select another item. We can specify all the design quantity we can specify. Then we can continue insertion. This way it helps us in easy insertion of the records. If I want to insert just above it, we can insert it. If I want to move this particular row on row number one, I can insert that so this row will be moved up. If we wanted to duplicate any particular row, it will insert the duplicate row just below that. We can hide it as well. We can hide it by clicking outside as well, or we can use the escape key to hide this. For all the fields which are linked with some other doc type, these are type link here. Autocomplete value can be filled directly from their values like when it is being created. It can be seen from this left sidebar when it was last edited. Who edited it? So, that part can be seen from the left side on some of the module where we have enabled a new email option. We can directly click on new email or we can use this email or WhatsApp option. We can see all the shortcuts keys from the help. We can use these shortcuts. We have awesome bar. It is very helpful in navigating. Let's say I type item. It will show me what all options available with these particular items. I can create new item. I can create new item report or item list. I can directly navigate. In case of field searchable, then if I always search then wherever that value is matching, it will show all the records like it is customer supplier or where. We can directly navigate to that record and we can open that particular report. We can directly go to that report. It searches only when that field is marked as searchable. From help we can navigate to the help icons available for that particular module. We can directly click on those modules and it will take us to that particular link. 
We can set our session defaults in case we are working with multiple companies. From which company we want to set the transaction, we can change it. It will be selected by default in the session defaults. With the help of reload, we reload the page after clearing the cache. In case you want to switch between the theme or the light theme, that can be done from here. You can log out from the system by using the logout. Thank you.